I'm gonna remove these here. You know, I'm, I'm kind of scared to take these off. It's like a relationship. Like once you take these things off of the platter, it's like you're committed. I'm not sure that the controller and I are in a committed kind of place. This is more like a Netflix and chill more than a Hulu and commit. So uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it for the purpose of this video. As you can see here, as I peel that off, I don't know what to do with this. Anyway, so we're gonna take this off. Hey everybody, DJ Chance here. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be covering this controller right here, the Newmark Party Mix Live, which is the new generation Party Mix controller for Serato DJ. I'll be going over what the new features are of this version of the controller versus the outgoing generation of the Party Mix controller. So let's get right into it. So first off, we're gonna start with the upper section here where they've added a set of powered speakers. What they've done is given you two two inch drivers that cover a frequency range of about 150 hertz to 20 kilohertz and they're five watt drivers so you've got some built-in powered speakers to this already impressive beginner controller so this is definitely something you can take right out of the box and plug it directly in if you're on a budget you only have 180 dollars and you're using a computer that you've already had you just put serato dj in, plug this in you've got speakers you've got lights and you can begin on your dj journey up next i'm going to discuss the turntable portion of the dj party mix controller the big news here is that they've given you a full touch capacitive surface on the entire top portion of the platter now you didn't have that with the party mix controller before it was barely more than just a nudge wheel you really couldn't do anything with that and they've given you plenty of surface area to have the touch capacitive wheel they've almost made it an edge to edge design so you really don't have any plastic around the upper edge of the end of the wheels that way you don't really mess up if you're trying to do a scratch pretty much no matter where you land your finger you're going to be able to control that wheel when you touch it instead of with a lot of controllers that put a wider bezel on the edge like here they've given you a full silver bezel and that generally would mark where the plastic ring would be that holds in the top of a wheel surface so this is great that they've given you the full surface and made good use of the available real estate on the top of this platter and since there's no full screens on this, what they've done is they've tried to decorate the top of it and given you kind of a textured surface here. They've given you the nice silver lines all over the place, which have good reflective material. It makes the wheel look like it's a much higher end quality product versus the original party mix that looked more like a toy. They've incorporated the silver 45 RPM adapter like Numark always does with a lot of their lower end controllers and all of their stickers, of course, have that 45 RPM adapter. One of the things that's just misleading about the capacitive touch wheel and the ability to scratch is that they've put this marker line on the platter to make you feel like you actually have a marking point when you're doing a scratch but that is not functional at all that is purely aesthetic not functional whatsoever if you're doing a scratch and you lift your finger off the platter of course and you go back to and you back cue to the beginning of your scratch of course this line didn't move because it's not a moving platter so every time you go backwards that line is going to move as well so just something to be aware of that this is purely aesthetic not functional at all one other thing that i like that newmark incorporated from another controller into this controller is that they've incorporated the design of the newmark mix track platinum and the mix track platinum effects wheels they've given you a higher off the deck platter so it's much thicker you have much more room for your fingers to fall into these grooves here so this way you can do your nudging a lot better and it's a little more precise the weight of the wheels is about what you'd expect it's surprisingly light for what it is so it does do really good spin forwards and spin backs as you can see just doing nothing at all it spins for quite a while and you can kind of make out that the lights back there are responding to the music they do function to the music even during a spin back which is a cool little feature to have <laughs>
just goes to show that the lights are very responsive to whatever it is you're playing. One drawback that I have found in the two days of playing with this controller is that as you can see already on the surface, there's like a little nick here. See if you can make that out in the camera. There's a small nick in the paint already. The fact that this already has a little nick built into the paint, that kind of worries me. But again, this isn't like a road dog controller. This is something that's meant to be in a bedroom. This didn't really bother me because of the cost of the product, but I did feel it's something to mention. Let me quickly go over what the pad modes do and how they function. We're going to start off with the hot cue. As you can see that these are all lit up in red, that means that I have hot cues already pre-programmed or pre-loaded in my song, but you can of course program them anywhere you want in your track. That's the purpose of them. You can get to the point that you want to get to in the song quicker. That way if you want to do quick samples or you want to do some drumming with the pads, you have that capability. When you don't have any hot cues loaded at all, these will not be lit up. So if I erase these right now, you'll see that now that I press down pad mode and hit the corresponding 3 and 4 button, they're now unlit. That means that these two are now available to be loaded with fresh hot cues. And let me show you how quickly that is to load a hot cue anywhere you'd like. You can put it anywhere. Now that you see underneath the pad mode, loop is lit up, so we're now in loop mode. So what these performance pads will control will be a one beat loop, a two beat loop, and then a four beat loop, an eight beat loop. And I know that can be a little confusing if you're just starting out as a DJ, because if you look down and you have a one beat loop that's lit up, and then you have a two beat loop, it goes with logic that the next button would be the three beat loop, but that's not a thing. So you just gotta keep in mind that this will always be the four beat loop and this will always be an eight beat loop. Forever and ever and ever and ever, we will be here forever. Do you understand that? Another thing of note to mention with the pitch control is that you only have the ability to go plus or minus 8%. You still don't have the ability in the controller to adjust the 16% or 15% that you can swing through with the software. And I still find it weird that they didn't even put any numbers at the ends of the plus and the minus area because I thought what they were going to end up doing was having some kind of firmware or software update that you would be able to change the pitch control range in some manner on the controller. Maybe in the software you could change it to 16 or 50 and then control it from here. I understand that at $180 they can't put physical buttons here to switch all that, which shouldn't be expected anyway. It would have been nice to have in the Serato software if you've been able to adjust the range, even if you had to do it in the software like you have to control the lights or you have to do the headphone section. Now we hit the pad mode button again, we'll go directly into sample mode. In sample mode, you'll have whatever samples that you already have loaded in your Serato DJ software. Now this is something that you cannot load up from the hardware of the controller itself. It's something that has to be done in the software. You have a section in the Serato DJ software where you can upload your samples. In the sample bank in the software, you have eight available samples and then four banks of those samples. You cannot access them through the controller itself. But again, you, this is something that you're able to do with a $180 controller. If you want access to all of the samples, you would need to upgrade to a much more expensive controller. But to have that ability with something that's $180 is pretty fantastic, especially considering at the time when I started DJing, in order to have any samples, you had to go out and spend over a thousand dollars just to have a sample, never mind having the ability to get four. I have my four standard samples that I generally use everywhere. You can put whatever sample you want. You even have the ability to put entire tracks in the sample bank. So you do have the ability to preload, let's say, an instrumental in the sample bank and be able to play an acapella over your other deck or scratch with the other deck and then scratch something else on this deck. 
You can really let your creativity flow with having all of these features available to you. So my samples would be something as follows. DJ Chance, you better watch out. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. And there is a sample of my samples. Now let me show you what an effect would sound like and what happens when you hit the pad mode and you can scroll through the effects on the live buttons. Now I'm going to play the track and I'm going to go through my effect number three, which is my transform button. Now a little tip that I have with using the effects on this controller is that if you want to change the beat that that effect takes place in, so if you want a one beat effect or a two beat effect, a four beat effect, or an eight beat effect, you have to hit the number four button in order to change that. It will scroll through all of them. The thing you have to remember is scrolling all the way through the effects to go through all the way through an eighth of a beat all the way to an eight beat is that each time you press the button it'll switch and once you reach the end of that range so let's say you hit the button and you are now on an 8 beat effect next time you press the button it's going to start back at the beginning at the 1 8th of a beat so if you want to get back to go from an 8 beat back down to a 1 beat you have to press the button several times and monitor it on the screen to see what it changed to what i've also found is that a lot of the effects won't actually change to that one eighth beat or one quarter beat or one sixteenth beat when you press this button. Some of the effects won't trigger at all in that range, but they may start to do it as you scroll through it. It may be behind one or two of the beats. So as you're scrolling through and your screen says that you're now at half a beat, it may start doing the one sixteenth beat that you were trying to get it to do a second ago. And then when you press it the next time, it's going to jump to whatever the next one is. So it's a weird little quirk that they quite haven't figured out with the effects on this. But again, it's just a beginning learning tool. And for what you're paying for this, it's actually quite impressive to even have the feature to be able to adjust effects at all. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you press down the pad mode button when you're in effect mode and holding down the corresponding button of the effect bank you want to scroll through. If you want to use the 1 16th beat or the 1 32nd beat or you want to go to 16 beats or 32 beats, you'd have to trigger them manually in the Serato DJ Pro software. And on the bottom here we have the always controversial sync button which at this point it's just like let it go people the sync is a thing you're never going to get rid of it it's always going to be here it's a useful tool especially for transitions if you feel a dj is no longer a dj because of this you really need to rethink where the technology and where the genre of djing is right now versus where you started with turntables years ago long playing record i'm tired it's just a matter of fact of life that the sync is here to stay. It's been here for about 25 years now. It's not going anywhere. There is one drawback to the sync button on this controller, and that is that you cannot disengage it once it has been engaged on the controller. If you want to turn off the sync, you can't just hold down the pad mode button and hit the sync button. That doesn't work for this controller. You'd have to manually go into your software and turn off the sync there. So be very careful when you're moving the fader around, maybe your thumb hits that button and you're playing two different BPMs that are vastly different. Maybe you're playing a 110 beats per minute and you're trying to mix in a 78 beat per minute and you by accident hit this sync button and you're transitioning over, it's really going to screw up your mix. And the sync is always going to sync to whatever the master track is that's playing out to your crowd in the moment. So if you've got that 110, let's say, playing out to your crowd and you're trying to get down to 78 80 beats per minute that synced track is going to jump up to 110 and it's really going to mess with your mix 
and seeing that this pitch fader only does plus or minus 8%, you're really not going to get a good transition there no matter what you do. So be very wary of hitting the sync button by accident. When you do hit the sync button, it will light up in bright blue. You can see it's kind of lit up. It's kind of in a subdued blue color right now. But when it is activated, it will be a lot brighter, as you can see right there. But you can't turn it off. So I even holding down the pad mode in the sync, it's not working. So you have to do it manually. So I'll reach over into the software. I'll turn it off and you can see now it's back to its lighter blue. Now the pitch fader as I mentioned is pretty much what you'd expect. There's nothing spectacular here. It's just a short throw pitch fader and the increments that it jumps up aren't really consistent. So every time you go from let's say 0.00% of your pitch, the very next increment that I've been able to get out of this, no matter what laptop I use, but still using Serato DJ Pro, the newest version, which is 2.5.6, the increments jump up or down 0.012, and then they start to jump up anywhere between 0.18 and then like 0.21. So it varies. So if you want very precise mixing, this isn't your controller. But again, this was never meant to be that. This was meant to get your feet wet and start getting familiar with the movements, the feeling, and the fundamentals of DJing. Another thing of note to mention with the pitch control is that you only have the ability to go plus or minus 8%. You still don't have the ability in the controller to adjust the 16% or 15% that you can swing through with the software. And I think, and I still find it weird that they didn't even put any numbers at the ends of the plus and the minus area because I thought what they were going to end up doing was having some kind of firmware or software update that you would be able to change the pitch control range in some manner on the controller. Maybe in the software you could change it to 16 or 50 and then control it from here. I understand that at $180 they can't put physical buttons here to switch all that which shouldn't be expected anyway. It would have been nice to have in the Serato software if you've been able to adjust the range, even if you had to do it in the software, like you have to control the lights or you have to do the headphone section. The next thing I'm gonna discuss is the mixer portion of this DJ controller. This is probably something no one's gonna notice, but I do like the way they've tried to put a separation between the sections. They've actually put physical lines carved into the surface of the controller here to differentiate your turntable platter and your mixer section. In the previous model, they had it as painted white lines. And now they've actually gone through the trouble of carving this out. So I like that they did something like that. That's just a little cute little quirk that it has. Now the crossfader is exactly what I expected. It has the same knobs as before, and it has the same feel as the previous outgoing generation of the party mix. It feels exactly the same. It's not too heavy, not too light. They're probably not going to wear all that well because my other party mix controller had already needed a fader on one side which on the left side which was kind of odd because generally i'm slamming the right side so why the left side is getting a little bit staticky don't know but again it was a 129 dollars controller so i expect about the same performance here the upside that they've given is to the up faders now the up fader you can control the curve adjustment of the up faders in the Serato DJ Pro software. And that was a really nice surprise because before you just kind of had a long throw, but now you have the same kind of curve adjustment that you have from the crossfader. So when you're doing cuts and scratches and you're trying to get a little more advanced, it's advanced. you can switch from scratching with the crossfader right to the up fader and only have to move it in small increments to get nice tight cuts. You know, mixing things up is tight. Now, speaking of adjustments in the software, Serato DJ Pro also has the ability to allow you to adjust whether you want to hear split cue in your headphones or you want to hear your master cue. On the previous party mix, they actually had a knob right here. They had the main and then they had the headphone knob, but they had the cue and master knob in the middle. They've done away with that, and I don't know why because... I mentioned it at length in the other video, how much I liked that they had that feature. 
you only have pre-fader mix when you're listening in your headphones. You don't have post-fader mix right here on the board. You have to actually go and trigger that in the Serato DJ software. And I wish they just would have kept that button and moved the volume button over in the corner, kind of like they did with the mix track Platinum and Platinum FX. They've eliminated having the headphone buttons near the platters, which is what they had before, and they put them here. And I really do prefer that there was an actual knob that I can adjust and not have to jump into the screen to make that adjustment, which is something that you're probably gonna use a lot of. It's kind of like air conditioning controls and heated seat controls that are inside screens in the newer cars now. You don't have a physical button. You have to go through four menu screens in order to turn your heated seat on. Or if you want to adjust the fan for the passenger, you got to hit three different screens and load different options just to turn the temperature. There should always be a physical knob or a physical button for the features you're going to use the most. And the headphone buttons, they're backlit. And as I mentioned, they're pre-fader. And if you want to listen to both at the same time, you would have to press them both at the same time. But again, that would be pre-fader. Another good feature that they have in the mixer section is that they still kept the filter button. And that should be pretty much standard on all controllers at this point. Because even the Hercules Starlight, which is a $79 controller, has this filter effect. And I wish that more controllers would just keep that as a standard thing because it pretty much is at this point. It's something that everyone's heard before and something DJs have all seen before. And when you start to graduate to more expensive controllers, it's going to be on all of them. You're pretty much getting all the features that you're gonna advance to later that are just gonna be higher quality of what you started off with, with something like this. And I'm gonna play the track so you can hear what the filter sounds like. You also have the bass and treble knobs here. Now, I'm not sure of what the shelving frequency is of the bass and treble knob. They just pretty much control generic bass, generic treble. There's no, you know, this controls 200 hertz and the treble knob controls 8 kilohertz. There's none of that. You just kind of get some treble and you get some bass control. Rocking over that bass treble. It's about in line with everything else in the class. Up above that, you have the level control. You have your minimum and maximum, and that's just giving you a little extra level, especially if you have lower end tracks. Now, they're probably not recorded as loud. Maybe you have older tracks. This is just to give you a little bit of that extra volume so you can have matching levels in your headphones or playing out into your crowd. Next to that, you have the browse library knob, and of course, you can scroll through all of your tracks on the library, and if you want to switch to a different window in the Serato DJ software, you would just press in the button. So if you're scrolling through your crates, you would just scroll through your crates here and then once you've landed on a crate you want, you would press in the button and then you would open up the crate. And then again, you can scroll through the songs in that specific crate. And then once you've found the track that you're looking for, or the sample or whatever it is, then you can load it to the corresponding one or two deck. Another thing that they've incorporated into the controller in the effects section is that they've given you the ability to choose the effects in the Serato DJ software right from the controller. You don't have a physical knob, of course, or you have no screen, but what you can do is hold down the pad mode button and then when you press whatever effect bank you have on your screen, you have three effects banks on your screen and you can pick through each one of the different effects in that bank while you're holding down the pad mode button and hitting the corresponding button, such as this. Another great thing that they've incorporated with the Party Mix Live Control is they've actually given it a removable USB cable. And this was something that was really wrong with the previous model that I discussed in the video I did for it as well, is that it had a solid hardwired USB plug. So whenever that plug went bad on the previous generation party mix, you just had to replace the controller. It was garbage. Now that they've given it a removable USB, that's really promising in the longevity of this particular controller, especially at this price point. The one drawback with having a removable USB is that it sticks out so far that it might as well just be a Bluetooth controller with as far out as this thing sticks. In this canyon between them, will they ever be able to cross it? That's 
sticks out substantially more than I feel it should because this, this does move quite a bit. So that's something you have to be really careful with. Of course, your output is there. They've given you a 1 8 inch 35 millimeter output for the main and for the headphones. You don't get a quarter inch there. They ha do have a speaker on and off switch, which is handy because if you're bothering your friends or your neighbors or your loved one or your kids or a very precocious cat. Meow. On the right side of the controller, they've given you the latching on and off power switch, which is a nice feature to have. This one can actually be turned off, not like the other controller was always on because it was USB powered. But now that it has a power cord, you do have the ability to turn it off. Then you have the controls for the lights, which are right here on the side too with this button. They've given you more effect options than you had over the previous model. You now have four options of how you want the lights to work with this button. But in the Serato DJ software, when you're in mode number one, you can actually pick between three different programs of lights that they have in the Serato DJ software. So in effect, you actually have six different ways that you can program the lights built in versus the previous three you had in the old controller. Other little quirks that are on here, what they've done here too, is they've also given you this little movement notch that they've put here that used to be painted before was a white line and that they had before and they've actually gone through the trouble of carving that in there and you can get a better look at that nick i mentioned before the more that i look at this little nick here it's starting to bother me more and no one knows more than i do how badly you want to get rid of a bad nick if you look underneath you can see that the feet are a lot higher off of the table than the previous model and they actually don't slide around like the party mix did before so they've given it stickier feet and they've actually chamfered the edges here just to have a nice little grip when you're picking it up you've got room for your fingers and underneath it they've given it kind of like a nice little groove on the bottom they've given you good space underneath if you want to run your cables here you can run them right underneath and they're not going to be pinched underneath the software and there's still some airflow that's going to happen underneath that. So that's a good little thing that they've added there that I like as well. Now the rear of the unit looks pretty much what you'd expect. You have the party balls right there that light up. Party balls implanted in my chest. One light beer, one regular. Coming at ya! Ah! And this is pretty much the view that everyone that's in your crowd is going to see of you. They're going to see the new Mark logo right there. They're going to see what you're using, Party Mix Live, and then they're going to be blinded by these little tiny lights if they stare into them. Especially if they've been absorbing substances which may or may not be mind-altering that may or may not be approved by certain government agencies. Another thing to mention with the performance pads is whenever you're trying to trigger whatever pad mode you're in, whether you're trying to trigger a hot cue or a loop or sample or an effect, you definitely want to aim for the lower portions of these buttons because that's where they're going to trigger. The buttons tend to bend forward. They don't go flat down. They kind of lean like this. So you definitely want to aim to underneath of the numbers. So all in all, I feel like this is definitely worth the $180 that this thing costs. If you can get a, a better deal on it, it's even more worth the money. But with the touch capacitive wheels, the better nudge wheel, the powered speaker portion, having a removable USB, having more control over the lights, I mean, this really is the greatest beginner package that I think you can get for the money right now.